tourism is travel for pleasure, also the theory and practice of touring, the business of attracting, accommodating, and entertaining tourists, and the business of operating tours. Tourism may be international, or within the traveler's country. The World Tourism Organization defines tourism or generally, in terms which go beyond the common perception of tourism as being limited to holiday activity only, as people traveling to and staying in places outside their usual environment for not more than one consecutive year for leisure, business and other purposes. Tourism can be domestic or international, and international tourism has both incoming and outgoing implications on a country's balance of payments. Today, tourism is a major source of income for many countries, and affects the economy of both the source and host countries, in some cases being of vital importance. Tourism suffered as a result of a strong economic slowdown of the late 2000s recession, between the second half of 2008 and the end of 2009, and the outbreak of the H1N1 influenza virus, but slowly recovered. International tourism receipts grew to $1.03 trillion in 2011, corresponding to an increase in real terms of 3.8% from 2010. International tourist arrivals surpassed the milestone of 1 billion tourists globally for the first time in 2012, the same year in which China became the largest spender in international tourism globally with $102 billion, surpassing Germany and United States. China and emerging markets such as Russia and Brazil had significantly increased their spending over the previous decade. Etymology the word tourist was used by 1772 and tourism by 1811. William F. Theobald suggested that, etymologically, the word tour is derived from the Latin tournaire and the Greek tournos, meaning a lathe or circle movement around a central point or axis. This meaning has changed in modern English to represent one's turn. When the word tour and the suffix ism and ist are combined, they suggest the action of moving in a circle. Describing a circle implies returning to one's starting point, so a tour is a round-trip journey, i.e., the act of leaving and ultimately returning to the original starting point. Therefore, one who takes such a journey can be called a tourist. Today, three schools discuss the roots of tourism. The French school, led by A. Hulot, argues that the term tourism comes from the old Aramaic ter, which was used for the exploration and movement of people in the Bible. This word was used for the first time when Moses began his expedition to the lands of Canaan. Another school of thought, the Onomastic school, considers the origin of the concept not from a linguistic perspective but rather links it to the last name of the French aristocrat de la Tour. According to this school, after Carlos V signed a treaty with England in 1516 in celebration of this event, the future king gave the Delator family exclusive rights to conduct commercial transport and related businesses. A third school focuses on the Anglo-Saxon world and scrutinizes Theobald's thesis, surmising that the roots of the word tourism lie in the ancient Anglo-Saxon term torn. These scholars have found evidence that the term was coined in the 12th century by farmers to denote travel with an intention to return. Over the centuries, the meaning of the word has shifted. By the middle of the 18th century, English noblemen used the term turn to refer to trips undertaken for education and cultural exploration. In reality, the purpose of the nobleman's trips to the different parts of the kingdom was to acquire knowledge that was later useful for governing. Significance of Tourism Tourism is an important, even vital, source of income for many countries. Its importance was recognized in the Manila Declaration on World Tourism of 1980 as an activity essential to the life of nations because of its direct effects on the social, cultural, educational, and economic sectors of national societies and on their international relations. Tourism brings in large amounts of income into a local economy in the form of payment for goods and services needed by tourists. 
accounting for 30% of the world's trade of services, and 6% of overall exports of goods and services. It also creates opportunities for employment in the service sector of the economy associated with tourism. The service industries which benefit from tourism include transportation services, such as airlines, cruise ships, and taxi cabs, hospitality services, such as accommodations, including hotels and resorts, and entertainment venues, such as amusement parks, casinos, shopping malls, music venues, and theatres. This is in addition to goods bought by tourists, including souvenirs, clothing and other supplies. Definitions in 1936, the League of Nations defined a foreign tourist as someone traveling abroad for at least 24 hours. Its successor, the United Nations, amended this definition in 1945 by including a maximum stay of six months. In 1941, Hunziker and KRAPF defined tourism as the sum of the phenomena and relationships arising from the travel and stay of non-residents insofar as they do not lead to permanent residence and are not connected with any earning activity. In 1976, the Tourism Society of England's definition was, tourism is the temporary, short-term movement of people to destinations outside the places where they normally live and work and their activities during the stay at each destination. It includes movements for all purposes. In 1981, the International Association of Scientific Experts in Tourism defined tourism in terms of particular activities chosen and undertaken outside the home. In 1994, the United Nations identified three forms of tourism in its recommendations on tourism statistics. Domestic tourism, involving residents of the given country traveling only within this country. Inbound tourism, involving non-residents traveling in the given country. Outbound tourism, involving residents traveling in another country. The terms tourism and travel are sometimes used interchangeably. In this context, travel has a similar definition to tourism, but implies a more purposeful journey. The terms tourism and tourist are sometimes used pejoratively, to imply a shallow interest in the cultures or locations visited. By contrast, traveler is often used as a sign of distinction. The sociology of tourism has studied the cultural values underpinning these distinctions and their implications for class relations, world tourism statistics and rankings. Total volume of cross-border tourist travel International tourist arrivals reached 1.035 billion in 2012, up from over 996 million in 2011, and 952 million in 2010. In 2011 and 2012, international travel demand continued to recover from the losses resulting from the late 2000s recession, where tourism suffered a strong slowdown from the second half of 2008 through the end of 2009. After a 5% increase in the first half of 2008, growth in international tourist arrivals moved into negative territory in the second half of 2008 and ended up only 2% for the year, compared to a 7% increase in 2007. The negative trend intensified during 2009, exacerbated in some countries due to the outbreak of the H1N1 influenza virus. World's Top Tourism Destinations The World Tourism Organization reports the following 10 destinations as the most visited in terms of the number of international travelers in 2014. International tourism receipts International tourism receipts grew to $1.2 trillion in 2014, corresponding to an increase in real terms of 3.7% from 2013. The World Tourism Organization reports the following entities as the top 12 tourism earners for the year 2014. International Tourism Expenditure The World Tourism Organization reports the following countries as the top 10 biggest spenders on international tourism for the year 2014. MasterCard Global Destination Cities Index Based on Air Traffic 
The MasterCard Global Destination Cities Index reports the following cities as the top 10 most popular destinations of tourism worldwide in 2015. MasterCard reports the following cities as the top 10 biggest earners on tourism worldwide in 2015. Euromonitor International Top City Destinations Ranking Based on the International Tourist Arrivals Euromonitor International released their rankings of the most visited cities in the world in January 2015. History Antiquity travel outside a person's local area for leisure was largely confined to wealthy classes, who at times traveled to distant parts of the world to see great buildings, works of art, learn new languages, experience new cultures, and to taste different cuisines. As early as Shelji, however, kings praised themselves for protecting roads and building way stations for travelers. During the Roman Republic, medicinal spas and coastal resorts such as Baie were popular among the rich. Pausanias wrote his description of Greece in the 2nd century AD. In ancient China, nobles sometimes made a point of visiting Mount Tyan, on occasion, all five sacred mountains. Middle Ages By the Middle Ages, Christianity, Buddhism, and Islam all had traditions of pilgrimage that motivated even the lower classes to undertake distant journeys for health or spiritual improvement. Seeing the sights along the way, the Islamic Hajj is still central to its faith and Chaucer's Canterbury Tales and Wu Chengen's journey to the West remain classics of English and Chinese literature. The 10th to 13th century Song dynasty all also saw secular travel writers such as Su Xi and Fan Chengde become popular in China. Under the Ming, Zhu continued the practice. In medieval Italy, Francesco Petrarch also wrote an allegorical account of his 1336 ascent of Mount Vento that praised the act of traveling and criticized Phrygia. In Curiositas, the Burgundian poet Michaud Tale Levent later composed his own horrified recollections of a 1430 trip through the Jura Mountains. Grand Tour Modern tourism can be traced to what was known as the Grand Tour, which was a traditional trip around Europe, undertaken by mainly upper-class European young men of means, mainly from Western and Northern European countries. The custom flourished from about 1660 until the advent of large-scale rail transit in the 1840s, and was associated with a standard itinerary. It served as an educational opportunity and rite of passage. Though primarily associated with the British nobility and wealthy landed gentry, similar trips were made by wealthy young men of Protestant Northern European nations on the continent, and from the second half of the 18th century some South American, U.S., and other overseas youth joined in. The tradition was extended to include more of the middle class after rail and steamship travel made the journey less of a burden, and Thomas Cook made the Cook's Tour a byword. The Grand Tour became a real status symbol for upper-class students in the 18th and 19th centuries. In this period, Johann Joachim Winkelmann's theories about the supremacy of classic culture became very popular and appreciated in the European academic world. Artists, writers and travelers affirmed the supremacy of classic art of which Italy, France and Greece provide excellent examples. For these reasons, the Grand Tour's main destinations were to those centers where upper-class students could find rare examples of classic art and history. The New York Times recently described the Grand Tour in this way. 300 years ago, wealthy young Englishmen began taking a post-Oxbridge trek through France and Italy in search of art, culture and the roots of Western civilization. With nearly unlimited funds, aristocratic connections and months to Rome, they commissioned paintings, perfected their language skills and mingled with the upper crust of the continent. Gross, Matt, Lessons from the Frugal Grand Tour, New York Times, 5 September 2008. The primary value of the Grand Tour, it was believed, laid in the exposure both to the cultural legacy of classical antiquity and the Renaissance, and to the aristocratic and fashionably polite society of the European continent.
Emergence of leisure travel Leisure travel was associated with the Industrial Revolution in the United Kingdom, the first European country to promote leisure time to the increasing industrial population. Initially, this applied to the owners of the machinery of production, the economic oligarchy, the factory owners and the traders. These comprised the new middle class. Cox and Kings was the first official travel company to be formed in 1758. The British origin of this new industry is reflected in many place names. In Nice, France, one of the first and best to establish holiday resorts on the French Riviera, the Long Esplanade along the seafront is known to this day as the Promenade des Anglais. In many other historic resorts in continental Europe, old, well-established palace hotels have names like the Hotel Bristol, Hotel Carlton, or Hotel Majestic, reflecting the dominance of English customers. A pioneer of the travel agency business, Thomas Cook's idea to offer excursions came to him while waiting for the stagecoach on the London Road at Kibworth. With the opening of the extended Midland Counties Railway, he arranged to take a group of 540 temperance campaigners from Leicester Campbell Street Station to a rally in Loughborough, 11 miles away, on 5 July 1841. Thomas Cook arranged for the rail company to charge one shilling per person that included rail tickets and food for this train journey. Cook was paid a share of the fares actually charged to the passengers, as the railway tickets, being legal contracts between company and passenger, could not have been issued at his own price. This was the first privately chartered excursion train to be advertised to the general public Cook himself acknowledging that there had been previous, unadvertised, private excursion trains. During the following three summers he planned and conducted outings for temperance societies and Sunday school children. In 1844 the Midland Counties Railway Company agreed to make a permanent arrangement with him provided he found the passengers. This success led him to start his own business running rail excursions for pleasure, taking a percentage of the railway tickets. Four years later, he planned his first excursion abroad, when he took a group from Leicester to Calais to coincide with the Paris exhibition. The following year he started his Grand Circular Tours of Europe. During the 1860s he took parties to Switzerland, Italy, Egypt and the United States. Cook established inclusive independent travel whereby the traveller went independently but his agency charged for travel, food and accommodation for a fixed period over any chosen route. Such was his success that the Scottish Railway Companies withdrew their support between 1862 and 1863 to try the excursion business for themselves. Cruise shipping Leisure cruise ships were introduced by the Peninsular and Oriental Steam Navigation Company in 1844, sailing from Southampton to destinations such as Gibraltar, Malta and Athens. In 1891, German businessman Albert Ballon sailed the ship Augusta Victoria from Hamburg into the Mediterranean Sea. In 1900, one of the first purpose-built cruise ship was Princess and Victoria Louise, built in Hamburg. Cruising is a popular form of water tourism, modern-day tourism. Many leisure-oriented tourists travel to seaside resorts at their nearest coast or further apart. Coastal areas in the tropics are popular both in the summer and winter. Winter Tourism Street, Moritz Switzerland became the cradle of the developing winter tourism in the 1860s. Hotel manager Johannes Badrut invited some summer guests from England to return in the winter to see the snowy landscape, thereby inaugurating a popular trend. It was, however, only in the 1970s when winter tourism took over the lead from summer tourism in many of the Swiss ski resorts. Even in winter, up to one-third of all guests consist of non-skiers. Major ski resorts are located mostly in the various European countries, Canada, the United States, Lebanon, New Zealand, Japan, South Korea, Chile, and Argentina. Mass tourism Mass tourism developed with improvements in technology. 
which allowed the transport of large numbers of people in a short space of time to places of leisure interest, so that greater numbers of people could begin to enjoy the benefits of leisure time. In continental Europe, early seaside resorts include Heiligandam, founded in 1793 at the Baltic Sea, being the first seaside resort, Ostend, popularized by the people of Brussels, Boulogne-sur-Mer and Deauville for the Parisians, Taumina in Sicily. In the United States, the first seaside resorts in the European style were at Atlantic City, New Jersey and Long Island, New York. Adjectival tourism Adjectival tourism refers to the numerous niche or specialty travel forms of tourism that have emerged over the years, each with its own adjective. Many of these have come into common use by the tourism industry and academics. Others are emerging concepts that may or may not gain popular usage. Examples of the more common niche tourism markets include other terms used for niche or specialty travel forms include the term destination in the descriptions, such as destination weddings, and terms such as location vacation.